Coming up in just a second, I'm going to be diving into the idea of the Celtics possibly trading for one of the best defensive guards in the league, Alex Caruso. Could it be a good fit? Could the Celtics make it work? We'll dive into that here in a second. But guys, right now, the Celtics are on a two-game losing streak. And listen, I'm a superstitious guy. Like today's video if you want the Celtics to snap this two-game losing streak and beat the Brooklyn Nets tonight. It's a simple, free, easy way to help us out here. Like today's video if you want the Celtics to end their two-game losing streak right now. What's going on, guys? Welcome in the Celtics today by Chat Sports. My name is Patrick Seatman, filling in for Alley Barefoot on today's video. I'll be joined by my man Smitty here in just a second, but we're going to break it down. Trading for Alex Caruso. Does it make sense for the Boston Celtics? Because a lot of Celtics fans on uh, social media have been really clamoring for an uh, Alex Caruso trade. And I'll tell you what, I mean, it does make a lot of sense. And uh, the number one thing with Caruso, and I've been saying this for a while, is the box score is not going to blow you away. Like, his season stats right now, you're saying like, oh, Caruso's a middle of a pack guy, like only an eight point a game score, 2.4 assists. You know, he's got really incredible efficiency, which I respect that uh, uh, part of Caruso's game, very self aware offensive player but like these stat sheets like they're I mean they're not gonna blow you away and kind of gets to this point Smitty here he's not the biggest scoring threat but what I do like about Caruso he's a very self-aware offensive player and Correct. he's like, kind of a connecting piece on offense absolutely and you know he, he's putting in those eight points a game right now so far this season but that doesn't tell the whole story like he yep. could be put look at look at look at, look at uh, Wednesday night for example yeah. he put up 19 points on really efficient shooting versus yep. Phoenix Suns He's a selective offensive player. Like you mentioned, he's very self-aware. He knows he's not going to go out there and put up 17 shots a night to yeah. try to get that 25 points per game on the season. That's not his game. It's not, it's not what he's out there for. It's not what he's paid for. Um, but when he does have those offensive outbursts, it's very Derek White-esque in the True, sense that point. he's selfless and knows when to take his shots. Yep. He'll, he'll take those heat check type of shots if he's hot. But it's not the main thing that he's out there doing the basketball court. No, and if he would were to join the Celtics team, like the Celtics don't need another guy that can put the ball in the bucket. The Celtics are fine in that regard. Yep. I mean, you got some of the best scorers in the league on the wing. I mean, obviously, Kristaps is having a great, great season right now. But again, great point that you made. Like he can be very selfless on the offensive side of the floor. And Caruso, like where he makes his money, and I will pound the table for this, is I think he is the best point of attack defender in the entire NBA right now. I mean, the, and the stats don't lie. Like, they back I, it up. I love deflection, Smitty. Like, mm -hmm. that is one of my favorite stats on defense. Tell the people why you like deflections. So I, so I compare it like this. If we go NFL, a little NFL-NBA comparison, I think deflections are like pressures in the NFL, and steals are kind of like sacks. But also, you think about it, NBA offense, they're running their sets, they're trying to get set up. If you just get a hand on a basketball, it just disrupts everything they're trying to do. 100%. I mean, if you can get a hand on a basketball, it could be the difference. It might not turn the ball over. Like, listen, it, it, Caruso, you know, say he puts his arm out, hits the ball, yep. it goes out of bounds. It doesn't go down as a steal, but no. it's absolutely a forced turnover, and that's how deflections uh, matter so much in the NBA. I, I, I'm, I'm very much on your side just looking at it as if uh, it's pressures versus sacks in that sense. Yeah, and he's first in the NBA in that regard. I mean, 33 deflections, uh, absolutely insane from Caruso. But it also, you know, steals per game, he's still top 15, tied yep. for 12th, and then charges drawn. Those are little things. Those are gaining your team that should have extra possession because a lot of these NBA games, you know, they come down the last couple plays and Correct. they're always tight games. If you could just have that extra possession, that's where charges, deflections, steals, like these little things that Caruso does so, so well. And he doesn't stop there. He it makes an absolute impact, and it's, it's quite apparent uh, for Very. the Chicago Bulls over there. I mean, I mean, this is ridiculous. The Bulls' defensive rating when Caruso's off the floor is 115.8. That finds them 25th in the NBA. When he's on the floor... They are top six in defensive rating. Like, that is one player on the basketball floor making that much of an impact. And I know we talk about, like, oh, the best defensive players in the league. Like, you know, they're centers. They're the typical rim protectors. But, like, this dude's making that impact as being just a point-of-attack defender. Correct. I mean, and he's a, he has the ability to switch on all types of different talents, including yeah, Kevin Durant, who he absolutely uh, locked up down the stretch of last night's game. I know the Bulls lost, unfortunately for you, yeah. Seeps. But – you know, he, he played some really good defense on Durant. Durant uh, took took that to heart, and he, gave, us, he, he gave him his props, gave him his flowers late. Yeah, so Kevin Durant had this to say, and I always think it's great when other NBA players, when they talk about, you know, obviously other NBA players, and they kind of give them their flowers, and, you know, KD had to chop it up to him. He said, he's a phenomenal player. I don't even want to call him a role player. 
I agree with that. But just a guy that you can plug with any lineup, and he's going to make the right reads, the right plays on the defensive and offensive side. And I think that's a great point that Kevin Durant made. And then also his teammate, DeMar DeRozan, just speaking about his overall impact Caruso has brought to this Bulls defense specifically. He said he's our Ray Lewis. He's the Deion Sanders. He's the Charles Woodson. He's definitely one of those great vocalists, communicators, and competitors when it comes to that end of the ball. He's a guy that without a doubt can win it for sure. Talking about the Defensive Player of the Year award. And Smitty, man, he would just like, you talk about a Boston Celtics player like, you almost think of Caruso, even though he's never played there. Yeah, he's like a he's like that Danny Ainge type, that just a yeah, scrappy yeah, yeah. guy. I mean, yeah. listen, l- l- let's not let's not talk about the uh, the amount of melanin in his skin. We know he's one of the, <laughs> yeah. the best the best white boy hoopers in the NBA. Oh, yeah. That might be its common thread with uh, some Boston Celtics, but yeah, uh, he would just fit in like so seamlessly. Well, it wouldn't even take. It, it, he could get traded right now and go play tonight. It's that seamless. For could him you imagine? Boston. You're Damian Lillard. It's the postseason. And you're just going, you're just, you know, scouting film, and you're like, oh, I got to go up against Derek White, Drew Holiday, and Alex Caruso. Good luck to every other guard in the Eastern Conference Absolutely. if the Celtics can actually put this off. And he would also, I think, fit in well offensively because he'll be fine. I'm so serious, Mitty. He could shoot the ball zero times for the rest of the season. Yep. If he would join the Celtics, he would be okay with it. He would be fine. And, and I think I – think- that, that is a testament to what we talked about yesterday as far as t- getting Tatum the ball more, getting Chris Porzingis the ball more. This eliminates a guy uh, off the bench there, whoever you're trading for Alex Caruso. Yep. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but that eliminates their shots from the game and yep. gets Tatum and Porzingis more involved. And that's what we want to see uh, down the stretch if the Celtics want to win an NBA championship. Simple as that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I absolutely love, love what Caruso has done for this Bulls team. I mean... Listen, I, I think like when you see a, just a guy that averages eight points, you really can't, you know, understand his value. But when we went, when we have a guy like Kevin Durant saying, "I feel, I feel like I'm disrespecting him, calling him a role player," that just speaks to how impactful he actually is on the court. Absolutely. But hey, you guys, let us know. Should Boston? Should they get in on the Alex Caruso kind of trade sweepstakes here? With obviously the Bulls struggling uh, to start the season, they're three and six right now. Should Boston pursue an Alex Caruso trade? Give me a Y for yes or an N for no down in the comment section. Would love to actually see what you guys got to say. But if the Celtics were to have to trade for Alex Caruso, what could a possible trade look like? We'll be breaking that down here in a second, but I do got to tell you guys about Prize Picks, today's sponsor of today's edition of Celtics Today. Guys, I absolutely love using Prize Picks. I was thrilled to hear that they're going to be sponsoring today's show. And Prize Picks, guys, it's daily fantasy and it's made easy. It's a simple, simple game to play. All you got to do is pick two or more players, choose more or less on their projected stat types, and you guys can actually start winning some serious cash today. Listen, there's a full slate of NFL games this weekend, and me and Smitty hopped in the lab here, and we we, uh, we uh, whipped up a pretty solid lineup that we want to share to you guys, and uh, listen, I would I would ride these picks if I were you, but we took more than four and a half receptions for Ben Nayuk. We got Gardner Minshew throwing more than half an interception for the Colts this weekend, and also Herbert, one of the best quarterbacks in the league. We're going to ride that hot hand and go more of 272 and a half passing yards. This is the lineup we're rolling with. If you guys want to fade our picks, or if you guys want to ride with Smitty and I, make sure you guys do do that at prizepicks.com slash CLNS. And if you guys use that code CLNS, it would actually give you a first deposit match up to $100. Link for that will be in the comments section and the description of today's show. Let's break it down though. An Alex Caruso trade, what could that possibly look like for the Boston Celtics? And listen, obviously the Celtics have a stacked team um, and it would be kind of hard to, you know, perform a trade like this, but you know, this is what the trade um, that we are going to be rolling with right now. Uh, yeah, excuse the logo right there. Um, oh, but shoot. No, yeah, we're good on that. But, hey, this is the trade. Obviously, we're going with the Bulls here. Um, the Bulls would obviously be getting Peyton Pritchard, a $6.2 million uh, trade player exception from Grant Williams, and then also a 2024 first-round pick and a 2025 second-round pick to get Caruso. And, Smitty, if some – like. If fans were possibly saying, oh, this is too much to give up to Caruso, like, I understand that. But like we just said at the top of the show, this may be the piece that, you know, takes the Celtics fully over the top. Absolutely. And it, listen, they have that Grant Williams trade to player exception. Yeah. What's interesting about this scenario is that the Celtics will have to make a move. The way that that traded player exception works is the Celtics will have to make a move for somebody that is of equal value to that $6.2 million dollar. Uh, and one of the names that I saw floating out there was Ricky Rubio. Okay. And Ricky Rubio would de- then come to the Celtics 
uh, as that added salary. Yeah. And because you can't just throw in the trade a player exception to make the salary caps work. I thought that's how uh, how it worked, but it's it's not. They got to make that deal first, then send over a guy like Ricky Rubio or somebody of that equal value that makes the salaries match up for Chicago, and then you throw in a couple draft picks because that's what the Bulls are going to be asking for at that point in the season, I'm assuming. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if the Bulls do continue this kind of bad stretch of basketball they're playing, I mean, they're going to be shipping everybody. They're going to be shipping Levine, DeRozan, maybe even a guy like Nikola Vucevic. And, you know, obviously, like the Bulls, like you say at the bottom of the screen, they're likely going to be sellers. And, you know, maybe the Bulls, like, maybe they'll want, like, a little, like, a better of a draft pick for Caruso. But if you give them a guy like Pritchard, give them a first-round pick for necessarily, again, I hate calling him it, but a role player – I, I think the Celtics could, could get it done. But this is where it does get interesting with Caruso. Yeah. Other teams are going to call. He's going to be one of the hotter names in the trade deadline just because For of how sure. how cheap he is and how valuable a player like that is. Yep. He's still under contract – for two seasons now, this yep. season and next, he'll be a free agent in 2025. So the value of his contract is like he's probably the most valuable contract in the NBA right now because yep. he gets paid so little, less than $10 million a year for Crazy. one of the most effective defenders in the game. Can't get much better than that, so contenders will be all over it. Yeah, I mean, you heard Kevin Durant at the top of today's show saying he could seamlessly fit with almost any team. I mean, shoot, if I'm Kevin Durant, I'm telling the GM of the Suns, hey, pick up the phone, call Chicago. I mean, the Lakers may pick up the phone and call the Bulls as well even other teams like in the eastern conference like what if the knicks want to get in on the sweepstakes there for a little bit but yeah yeah, obviously we're just gonna have to wait and see man we're gonna have to wait and see see. but we talked about the traded player exception we talked about giving away draft picks because the bulls are gonna be wanting that this time we didn't really talk too much about the guy the actual player that the boston celtics would be getting rid of on their roster and that's peyton pritchard and unfortunately he just hasn't had the best start to his season so far no he hasn't i mean shooting pretty poorly from the field right here um you know, only shooting 23.5% from the field this season. Um, points per game, obviously 3.1. But the thing is with Pritchard is, you know, maybe if he gets another role on a different team like the Bulls, where he would be taking more shots per game, where he would be, you know, obviously being more of the focal point in the offense, because he is more of that true scorer, where I think Peyton Pritchard's game best translates when he is more of, like, the guy. And, like, obviously with the Celtics, I mean, the Celtics are such a stacked team, like, offensively, it's going to be tough for him just to get his looks. And, you know, Smitty, I think this is a great point here is maybe it is just time for a change of scenery. I mean, it just hasn't had the opportunity so far in Boston to where I think he could showcase to be that 12-point-per-game scorer, like yeah. first guy off the bench. I think he would fit really well in a place like Indiana who loves you yep. know, those high-level scoring guards or you know, just, just a place that isn't – in the position that the Boston Celtics are in right now. It doesn't seem like Peyton Pritchard kind of fits their timeline. It doesn't really fit that role of, like, that go-to scorer off the bench. Yeah. He, it just hasn't been an efficient season so far for, for Peyton Pritchard. He was great in the preseason, hasn't showed up so far in the uh, in the regular season. And maybe a change of scenery will be good for him. Yeah, I mean, I mean like, definitely. Like it could totally unlock his career. He already got paid. doesn't have yep, to worry about that. Point. So all, all he's probably worried about now is his role in, on, on the basketball court. And the Celtics... They just don't have a great one for him the way he's performing right now. Yeah, I think Pritchard's best case would be like going to a team that like just again needs a scoring guard off the bench. And like, yeah, I guess the Celtics, if you look at their roster, like maybe at, from like a broad view, you're like, oh, maybe they do need a scoring guard off the bench, but like all, all of the shots go to, you know, the big five for this team. So yep. just kind of tough for Pritchard to kind of, you know, really cement his role with the Celtics unit. Yep. It's never been consistent. So that, that's that's just where Peyton Pritchard kind of falls short in the Celtics lineup. He's just never had that consistent yeah. role. They, they, they kind of think about him in the back of their head. But yep. when, when push comes to shove and they put a guy out there, they're just not putting Pritchard out there, you know, enough for him to get in a rhythm. Definitely. I mean, this is the deal we offered uh, you guys. We offered the Chicago Bulls. But would you make this deal? A for accept, D for decline. Smitty, are you are you taking this? You think? I think I'm taking this. Yeah, uh, I think I'll take it. I, I think just you upgrade at the player position. Celtics are in a spot where they don't need to worry about draft capital. Yeah. Um, they have so many second round picks to offload. Yeah. That this just makes a, it makes no brainer sense to me uh, as far as this trade goes. Yeah, I mean, if you would have a guy like Caruso coming off the bench for this unit, I would 100 percent do it. I think this would be a great move for the Celtics. And again, I think the Celtics could legitimately call themselves one of the best defensive teams in NBA history if they would trade for Alex Caruso. I mean, you had three great point-of-attack defending guards, two great defending wings, and obviously, you know, the man in the middle, Kristaps Porzingis, guarding the rim. But, guys, thank you guys so much for watching today's edition of Celtics Today. Show Smitty some love. He's killing it on this channel. Go hit that subscribe button if you guys just want more Celtics content in your life. Hey, YouTube, funny how it works. If you guys hit this sub button, you're going to get more Celtics content on your YouTube page. So lock us in. We'll be your go-to for about just, or just about everything here 
uh, around the Boston Celtics. So subscribe, and as always, go Seas, baby.